Davy, Davy Crockett, King of the Wild Frontier. There is Leon Walt. He's been shot. He's been shot. Lee Oswald has been shot. That's one small step for man. Good morning, Vietnam! Ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles! Welcome to the Howdy Boomers show on the YouTube channel. This is a daily broadcast by Baby Boomers for Baby Boomers. Join the peanut gallery, become an official member of HowdyBoomy.com, where there's great gifts and ideas for the baby boomer generation. And we're going to be talking daily about things that affect everyday life. Like, we're going to be driving gas cars rather than worried about charging someplace to take half of our life getting there. We're going to be cooking with gas rather than whatever the woke generation wants us to cook with. Uh, we're going to be worried about climate change, but unlike John Kerry, who looks like the love child between Secretariat and Jerry Seinfeld, we're going to be letting Mother Nature take care of that. We're going to go back to the days when the good guys were the cops, the bad guys were the criminals. We're going back to the days when if you were born with a penis, you were male. If you were born with a vagina, you were female. Every day we're going to be broadcasting ideas that's going to help make America great again, again. And we're going to be bringing everybody to the forefront to remember what made this country great. In the days of the old laugh-in, every day we're going to sock it to them. Sock it to me? <laughs> Welcome to the Howdy Boomy Show. I hope we have a great week ahead of us. I hope you had a great weekend. Very interesting. You know, it's amazing. Uh, last weekend at this time, we're sitting here talking about the poor people who are in the submersible trying to find the Titanic and wind up getting murdered or killed themselves with the implosion of evidently a faulty submersible craft. And the world was captivated by the search and ultimate demise of those poor souls. And uh, now it's, I think, in uh, the future information coming out, we're going to find that it was a faulty construction, that this was on the high seas, which I guess there isn't very much law once you get out of the jurisdiction of the shores of the governing bodies, but on the high seas, it's sort of like Long John Silver in uh, the days of the pirates where there is no law, and some poor souls lost their lives because of it. Hopefully we'll learn from it. We realize that down below the water, you're not going to last too long without oxygen, and it's, uh, it's not going to be easy to find the cause of what happened, but I know that there are going to be thrill seekers. I'm not going to be one of them, but it's going to be interesting to find out what happened and what the ultimate cause of that was. I think we know it's going to be structural and it's going to be human error. Well, now, this week, we have the Russian people, the gentleman Solitsyn, who took his Wagner group, which is a group of mercenary soldiers fighting for Russia and turned on his boss Putin because he figured the generals in Moscow have no clue what they're going for. Now it's very, very interesting. It sort of reminded me of the movie The Dirty Dozen. So what you have to do is you want to go after someone. What he did was he went into the prisons, emptied the prisons, gave the prisoners money, big money, to go out and kill people in the Ukraine. And nothing like getting evil people, people who have nothing to lose, to go out there and take off their frustrations. So you realize that you're, you're dealing with the worst of the worst, and you're governing them, you're paying them to kill other people. And he had a winning combination there because I guess this 40 or 50,000 band group of soldiers that he recruited from the Russian prisoners was just a lethal weapon, was the only, I guess, really good armada that the Russian military had. And he figured that the Russian military was being directed by a bunch of idiots. His people were being killed, not only by other Russians, by Ukrainians, because of the idiocy of the hierarchy and the strategy that the Russian uh, military was taking. So he decided to turn on Putin 
He figures he's got the strong arm. He could go there. He could overrule all of this stuff and take over Russia. Well, he started m marching back on Moscow, and he was victorious in doing that, where people were greeting him, and they were greeting the military, because I think the Russian people have had enough of this debacle. And uh, he got within, a, I would say, about 100 miles of Russia, and all of a sudden he stopped, because there was a deal brokered by one of Putin's allies to stop this mutiny, promise this guy that he'll be exiled, and if he stops all of this mutiny against Putin and the Russian military. Well, he agreed to do that. Now, if you know anything about Putin, you realize that he is a very vengeful, dictator, hatred, long memory. Anybody in the Russian hierarchy who was against Putin in this war mysteriously died, falling out of windows, suicide, poisoning, strangling. They had no idea what happened to him, but they died. So you know that Putin has a little force of men that's going to go out there and get rid of you. So this guy who led the Wagner group and uh, decided to, okay, I'll take my medicine and just get exiled and live the life of luxury, he is a dead man walking. He'll be dead within 90 days. Putin is not going to forget. He's going to restock. He's going to find people who were against him. He's going to kill them. And he's going to keep on continuing the insanity, I think, of trying to take over the Ukraine because we're pouring millions and billions and billions of dollars in there. We are basically fighting a proxy war. The Ukrainian people are fighting our war against Russia. And you have to understand that in the 2020 presidential election, uh, Vladimir Putin saw that Joe Biden was going to be the next president of the United States. And he started amassing troops outside of the Ukrainian borders and, and getting ready to attack. Now, he never would have done that if Donald Trump was president, because he knew Trump would come over there and kick his ass. But he saw Joe Biden was there. He knew Joe Biden was weak. He knew Joe Biden's own Secretary of Defense said that every foreign policy decision that Joe Biden has made in his entire political career has been wrong. And if you don't believe that, all you have to do is ask the families of the 13 soldiers that were killed in the debacle that was the withdrawal from Afghanistan. So Putin realizes that he's got a bozo in the White House. And bozos in the White House are surrounded by other bozos. They're very weak. Our Secretary of State should be wearing a dress. And he knows that no matter what happens, he's going to win. Two people won the election in 2020, theoretically Joe Biden, and the other one is Vladimir Putin. Because no matter what happens, if Joe Biden is still in the White House, Putin can never lose. And it's a sad state of affairs, but that's, that's how, what's going on. Trump lost, Putin wins. Trump gets back in the White House, you'll see a very, very quick end to this debacle in the Ukraine. Now, we're pouring billions of dollars into the Ukraine. Nobody exactly knows where it's going, but given the past history of the Biden family and their ties to corrupt people in the Ukraine, I can guarantee you, somewhere in that billions of dollars, some money is being funneled, funneled to the Biden family. Guarantee it. I, I wish we could do electronic tracing right now of money that's going from Ukraine to other sources, and one of those sources is going to be the Biden family. It's going to be there. Because that's what they do. They're corrupt. I've seen now where this transgender thing is really going crazy. I can't understand it. If you are going to do what you're going to do, do what you're going to do. But don't force it down my throat. Don't start making parades. Don't start doing this. And now you've got parents who are encouraging, or teachers who are encouraging little children, if they feel like they're going to be a girl, they want to be a girl, let them dress up as girls. Let them get some transgender operations. And here's what I figure, just for starters, if you're a father and uh, teachers or somebody or you're, you're pressing, your son wants to become a girl and he wants to dress up as a girl, if you dress up, if you let him dress up as a girl, you've got to dress up as one also. Walk around like that for a while and see how you feel. Vice versa, a woman. If you have a girl that 
you're telling her she should maybe want to be a boy if she's that's okay you've got to dress up like one the parents have to dress like the kids if they want to do that if they want to force something on their kids if teachers want to force something on their kids if medical people want to force something on their kids they've got to dress like they do let's see what happens if you do that your son wants to be a girl dressed like a girl so do you I'm telling you if you're born with a penis you're a male if you're born with a vagina you're a female end of story that's it I just don't understand the idiocy that's going on if you want to be gay you're gay act like it if you want to do it I don't care don't force it down my throat don't go parading down the street normal people don't this is just a, 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 a tactic used to try and make yourself seem normal which you're not I'm sorry you're not hope you have a great week hope things are gonna go well for you more is coming on the howdy boomy show on the YouTube channel a daily diatribe here watch it every day the howdy boomy show on the howdy boomy channel on YouTube go to howdyboomy.com for great ideas for baby boomers I love you have a great day God bless you God bless America